Hey guys, before we start part two, just wanted to say thank you for all of the reception that's been given to part one. It was really cool to see that you guys liked our conversation so much. I feel now validated that it was a good idea to break this apart so you guys get small bits of the conversation rather than one big long video. So in part one, we were talking more so about the finale itself. In part two, we talk about the season itself more so. So here we go. It, it just kind of, it lost its arc. It lost its direction so many times, especially in the final season. Like I didn't think that anything could be worse than season 14 and season 15 gets really fucking close yeah. um season 14 i barely remember any episodes of that and that was when i was on my full dab tirade that was when i was just fuming about the guy and i think in season 15 i was just like yep i guess here it is but yeah. <laughs> there was one good episode, one truly, truly, really good episode in terms of uh, homaging the show, which was uh, Golden Time. Was that the one? Mm -hmm. Is that the um, one? Is that the one where they had to play pool? I believe so. Yeah, Let me that. Double check. That I, that if that's it, that was the episode that I was like, holy shit, this is actually no, no. Golden Time was where they bought a lean back. Sorry, I, that one was a good one because they had uh, they brought Eileen back um in a decent way there was a cool standoff with witches Cass had a had a side story where he was interesting except for the really terrible sheriff no the one i'm thinking about is whatever the, the one gamblers the gamblers uh, yeah the gamblers that yeah that's the one where they play the pool game that was fan service that was homaging the show done correctly because you're mm -hmm. you're paying tribute to the very thing that the sh like the brothers were making their money off of for the longest time and that's yeah. how but at the same time you also had that confliction of well apparently they're not good at anything anymore which i hated yeah. the the episode before it was dumb as fuck i understand what the point of it was and yes there were certain things that made sense like the fact that the impala is still running as good as it is now yes that that's impossible the fact mm -hmm. that dean doesn't have a cavity in his mouth despite everything that was also yes that was true but the fact that they all of a sudden forgot how to fight they forgot how to pick locks it's like i i can understand certain things um but others were like these guys get the shit kicked out of them all the time maybe you should have it like hey maybe make the comment that they actually have concussions like yeah <laughs> like sam himself should have like massive hematomas he should yeah. have huge brain damage. <laughs> he should be a vegetable the amount of times that he's been knocked out. Um, but yeah, no, that... It looks like an, it's a funny idea in concept, but as a full-out episode, it was just... Dude. So, I don't know. I've always... I don't know. I feel that Dab, he was given a plate that just didn't have anything, and he started to dip towards like, the lower-end fan service, and obviously people liked it. Um, yeah. I mean, I liked it. Like, I, you know, I've always... I'm, I'm you know, Supernatural fangirl here. I, <laughs> I'll always love this show, regardless of its flaws, you know? And, um, but there's some things that I just can't get over. <laughs> huh. You know? Um, and I feel like there's been, like, a lot of people now, like, who are, like kind of feel the same as I do it's just like I, I was really hopeful for like this whole last season and then uh now I'm not <laughs> well and I admit that I have been getting kind of the nostalgia like uh the what's it um the last episode when I did watch it I did have the rose tinted glasses effect for a short minute and that's probably why I gave it a four. But in all honesty, if I were to review it as the season, it should have been a three. And like rewatching the first, I'm um, watching season four right now. On all honesty, that last episode is a fucking one right now because the quality drop is just so immense. But the thing is about Supernatural is because it went for so long, the degrade in quality happened gradually. Like it after five. It went down, then it went up a little bit to 8, and then it kind of got to a middle ground. And then 12, it just started to descend. But it yeah. descended slow enough that most didn't notice. I was one of the few who, 
like in the by that minority who was like hey there's some really bad fucking writing going on over here mm -hmm. um yeah it's no um should have listened to you <laughs> well, well it's, it's 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 what happens when you drag a show out as long as you have like yeah the impo it would have been if they somehow pulled off something that was actually immensely good fuck i would have been absolutely floored and i would have mm -hmm. appreciated it for that but i think i think at the beginning of season 15 i was like i'm i just hope it doesn't suck <laughs> That yeah was, that was that was my and i don't know i i just know that yeah i was like you, you were mentioning twitter and whatnot um a few of the fan pages that i was watching were just like well, i was just off to the side just watching the absolute carnage that was happening and it's like hmm. I, but a lot of people um came back like some people who people who had dropped off over the years uh they came back to watch that finale and I knew people who were in Ireland who were talking about this is a fucking travesty to a show. Um, yeah. But yeah, if you watch, like, if you dropped off at, like, season six or seven and then you came back, it, hell, if you dropped off in season 11 and you came back, you'd be like, what the fuck happened? Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it's, it's crazy to see how the show kind of just changed from what it was. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's very, very telling when rewatching the Kim Manners episodes of the earlier seasons. I know that he's gonna, uh, Kim is gonna pass away in season four. He died during production. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, I've, I'm going, to, I'm noticing the episodes that he really, every episode that he does, like, you see the, there's, there's effort behind the camera. Yeah. And then, and I, I, I really wish that, like, um, Super, it, it, well, bleh, sorry, I just like word vomited. Uh, these past few seasons, like it's kind of like filmed like a soap opera. The colors are oh, like, a lot saturation, uh, yeah. aperture. No, you're a hundred percent. It's been filmed like a soap opera. The last, the, this season in particular was filmed entirely like a soap opera. Mm -hmm. Like, don't get me wrong. There are some like really good scenes. I think when uh, I mean, uh, like just off the top of my head that I can think of, like towards the end of like season eleven when they're like. Uh, when like, the camera like goes up in the sky and they're all like outside after like uh trying to it's like when everything with god and amara starts like getting to the end like mm -hmm. i liked that but it's just like we haven't had like a lot of just like um like nice like aesthetic cinematography in the oh show. yeah there's none um for like what was it i rewatched season two when I was watching it and there's that episode where they go to Hollywood and they pretend to be on a film set, that's North Shore Studios and I've worked in that area and I realized the actual implications of the shot that they do where they come out of the building and then they walk down in between the two buildings and they come out into the open area and then they keep walking. Not only is that a long tracking shot, but two, where they walk through at the end, that's usually where a shit ton of trailers are so they had they would have to have coordinated with their own transport team as well as the other shows probably filming in that studio lot to make sure that, that space was open or at the very mm -hmm. least that they could walk through it and that's a that's a that's a bit of uh, of stuff to kind of to coordinate oh actually speaking of which um speaking of areas in which to to shoot the last part of episode 19 where jack says to them is like i i'm just whatever i'm hands off now and he turns and walks away that street is like a bike ride away from where i'm living right now and oh really yeah when i was re when i was doing my uh rewatch i was like oh wait a minute denko cycles holy shit i know where that is um <laughs> so i'm there it's it's kind of a lead in i'm going to be doing something later on this year uh, talking about locations of supernatural and yeah. I found out where they filmed the final. Uh, that was when the uh, what was it? Um, when the AD from Supernatural was on the show I was on. I did like go up to him quite a bit of times. Like, hey, where'd you guys film this? Hey, where'd you guys film this? And I found out where they filmed Swan Song now, which is funny because I've worked on the property several times and I never knew that was where it was. Oh wow! So I'm gonna be going back there. Um, I've seen uh, uh, what's her name? Alana King. I've seen her like go to um like the locations like some certain locations that they've filmed in i think she did one with a mystery spot i i like i've always wanted to like uh go to like 
the locations of like certain episodes because I feel like that would be really cool. But you know, I'm not in Canada. <laughs> oh, I actually didn't. I didn't even know she did that. Yeah, I. It was a while back ago. Um, but there was, um, a few. Uh, I think she has like one or two videos about it where she like uh, went to like the locations and took like pictures and stuff there. And uh, I remember watching it. It was like pretty good. I, uh, uh, let's see. I was uber jealous though because I I want to like. Where stand is she with from? Canada. I'm not sure off the top of my head. I think she's from the U.S., but um, I like her videos. Yeah, there's um, Bobby's Junkyard. Oh, and then there's the school. Yeah, the, the school that they filmed at, um, the Templeton Secondary, a, a film there before. Mm -hmm. uh, the Graveyard, yep. Let's see. I'm just... I'm just so, oh, um, I also know where they finished fighting against... Um, I know where they finished fighting against... Uh, chuck that was uh that's along the sea to sky highway um and then the other i know where the last shot is i know where that bridge is they actually used it for season five as well i'm hoping that i can get there in the summer i can't go there right now because it's a closed off park route but mm -hmm. i know where that bridge is I, I when i found out where it was i put it into my gps and i saved the exact <laughs> locations like i will go here one day yeah, um, you know, I actually think that, um, I really liked, yeah, uh, I know before we were talking about, like, the shots and stuff, um, I will say this with the last scene, I, I think that was, like, filmed nicely, like, I think, um, like, we haven't gotten, like, many close-ups like that in a while, of, like, Sam and, oh, I mean, we have, it's just, like, oh, it was nicely lit, you know, and it's, it's, it's a beautiful area, it's north, it's, yeah. it's north, North Pork or Quitlam, I think. It's it's a very lovely area. And I like the shot as it goes up with the bridge. Mind you, again, re-watching it, I can see the dust from the drone push up against their legs as it starts to curve up and, like, up into the left. I was like, oh, I never saw that before. I was like, oh, it's right there. But, it, you know, <laughs> I didn't notice it on the first showing, so... But... Yeah, I couldn't notice it because I was too busy bawling my ass out, so... <laughs> ah. But I guess, it, I don't know, do you... We kind of talked about the COVID effects, but did you have any other kind of wonders about it? Because it's like I. Well, I was more like just curious about like um, how like actors have to like, um, like what they have to do to be on set, and I know that it's it's different for everyone, but I, I uh, the, the reason why I kind of wanted to mention that and like bring it up to you because I know you have experience working on in that industry, and. Um, I know I've seen the COVID being COVID being used as like a reason as to like why the finale was so bad, and um, I just yeah I just kind of wanted to hear you give me like some sort of confirmation that it's not just because of COVID. Uh, <laughs> it was like yeah, certain people being not being able to come out. Yeah, that was probably COVID. Yeah. Um, like. I, from what I've got, yeah, they had shot, if they had one day left to shoot of of uh, episode 19, which, if I'm, might have been the end. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, apparently, that milk, sh that, that uh, restaurant that had the milkshake on the front of it is in the town that I live in, yet I have biked around this fucking town the last few weeks, and I've been trying to find this damn milkshake, but I can't find it anywhere. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, they had one day left, and then usually an episode it turns like a seven to ten day block, or most maybe a th maybe fifteen day block. So they would have had to have filmed the last uh, the last episode during COVID. And yeah. there were certain shows that were doing like the full like zone A, zone B, zone C. Like people couldn't like interact with different groups. Um, and then for, for the actors, yeah, yeah. When they came up, when Dean or when Jensen and Jared came up, they had to isolate for 15 or for 12 or for 14 days when, yeah. wherever they were, which that's something that's also kind of curious to me. I kind of wonder, I imagine these guys must have owned property up here. They had been up here for so long. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, other actors if they were coming up they would have had to have isolated which maybe that's why they used the what's her name the vampire from season one is because she's a canadian actress and mm -hmm. she at least i think she's a canadian actress and so she would have been up here and she would have been available um yeah but uh no if a lot of things like the one show i was working on aside from the showrunners 
everyone was Canadian. The actors were Canadian. The crew was Canadian. The uh, the even the most of the producers were Canadian, which is very unheard. The cast being all Canadian is very unheard of. Um, but that was what we were doing because, well, yeah, we couldn't have many American actors coming up here. And right now, though, because of how we're handling it and because of all the testing facilities we have, Vancouver has now surpassed. Like, we're ahead of Hollywood. We are now the... I think we're even ahead of Georgia. Like, Marvel is possibly looking at filming up here. We, we are so... Like, we're so lucrative right now. Because of how... Well, because of how our country has handled COVID. I yeah. I, um, I honestly, compared to America... Um, anywhere would be better. <laughs> uh, it, it's it's there are some days where you know like not everyone is a hundred percent on things, but most of the time, mm-hmm. like especially as we're you know as we, hell we had a we didn't go into a state of emergency like Toronto. Toronto shut down entirely at, on Boxing yeah. Day. We are like at the precipice, but I think our doc Bonnie Henry she's hoping that uh, I think our state of don't go and hang out with other people um, as is extended to the 18th. But as far as I know, yeah. people are back on set already, which is some aren't though. Some big ones aren't. I know Batwoman isn't going back to work until the 18th, which for a big CW show like that. Yeah, they have to. Um, but yeah, no, it's well, they're, they're taking it really damn seriously. Like, well, it's good though, because you know, um, when I was in New York, there was, um, like we did have like a kind of like a lockdown and I had the quarantine um, with the people in my house, right? And mm-hmm. you, you should only leave, like, leave the house for like groceries and stuff like that. Now I like moved to Florida and it's like COVID doesn't exist down here even though like the numbers are like soaring. But no, well, yeah, I can see really... there's a t- shit ton of old people down there, right there? Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's like, um, it, it's when I was working in New York, because I worked at a grocery store. <laughs> um, you know, people, most of the time, were doing what they're supposed to do, and you had the occasional person who just wasn't, you know. Um, but even, like, I see kids that I went to school with on Snapchat partying and all this other stuff, and it's like, can you guys just please, like, stay inside so we can get this over with? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, you know? It, I'll admit, 20, it, there were some parts of last year that were really, really strange. Like, I, admittedly, I guess for you guys in New York, it was a different story. I, I took the time and I just started going on bike. I would go for jogs at like six in the morning and then I would go for bike rides at like 10 at night. I would walk uh, 10 miles a day with my best friend every day. Cause That's she, uh, good. Two, yeah, so my friend Jesse and Amanda, they're sisters, um, but they lived with me for about three months during the quarantine. Mm-hmm. And um, after the, the three months, I got a job because I kind of had to. And then they like went back home, but um, it was like New York took it seriously, and um, but the thing was, uh, it sh- at, it should have been at like a federal level of it being taken seriously, but it wasn't. I'm not gonna like you know throw any shade or anything, but I feel like our country as a whole just like did not act fast enough with it, and that's like. Um, like New Zealand, for example, or Australia, um, oh. they have like zero cases. Oh no, they do. The only the the downside of that is is that their entire economy's tanked. Like I think yeah. the amount of things that have shut down in Australia apparently is like absolutely immense. But that's what happens, mm-hmm. right? You when you have s- situations like this, things are. Well, would you rather have the entire economy collapse or have? a shit ton of people die yeah you that's know? that's it, like kind of the, the the pull and tug on it and but because america is a capitalistic society oh we yeah care more about our economy than we do the lives of people mm-hmm. and that's like been very made very evident to me well, <laughs> over it, these past few months it, it's the way we're it's uh, been a real strange struggle for most Mo, my mm-hmm. my my fear is that the movie theaters will not survive this yeah and i'm very um, scared about that <laughs> Yeah, because um, I, I haven't personally been to the movie. I mean, obviously, I haven't been to the movies at all during 2020. But before that, I, I'm i the kind of person who, like, I'll wait until a movie comes on Netflix or, like, I don't know, I'll find it online or whatever. But um, 
I, 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 I was, like, thinking about, like, all the other, like, there's a lot of places that, like, after, like, it's hard to, like, picture what the normal is gonna be like after everything finally dials down a little bit, which it hasn't, like, at all. It's just, like, continuously been getting worse and worse. <laughs> yeah. Um, especially here in the United States. I don't really know how it is in Canada right now um, with COVID and the way that, um, like, how many cases or whatever, but I know that the numbers are still going, like, astronomical here, and it's it's pretty ridiculous because it's, like, if people just, like, actually listened and we had, like, things put in place in order to, like, ensure that people were doing what they were supposed to do, then, you know, it, not saying that life will go back to normal, but a lot of people could, you know, feel a lot safer knowing that not, like, a shit ton of people have COVID <laughs> and mm-hmm. don't even know it, you know? Oh, yeah. And, and going back to everything that was our big that was the big thing with film is that they shut down and they needed to make insurance policies in terms of like when you have to stop filming something you're losing money every day like for instance um the the james bond film apparently every month that they are is it it's either either every day every week or every month either one is astronomical but the closer the, the shorter you get it's crazier they're losing like something on five hundred thousand dollars every week that the film is being delayed, um, oh, and because wow. it, it, it's it's an insurance. <laughs> oh, it's it's nuts. Well, because they spent all that money on the advertising for it, right? And then they uh, mm-hmm. well, very last minute they pulled. And for Supernatural, kind of in the same same ballpark because they have to keep on they had to keep the uh, the rental agreements in terms of studio space. Yeah, um, and the thing with Supernatural was. Um... You know, I personally, as, you know, I would have rather them waited to, like, obviously I know it's, like, not possible because, you know, like, that you can't really change, like, um, How the world's when working. the show gets to come out. But, like, I, I, I honestly think that, like, because I know there was a different script for the last episode where they had, like, everybody come back that they intended. Oh, yeah, I, I, like... I assumed, like, yeah, when, like, the whole heaven thing, there was definitely a lot. I think that's why the death scene might be so long, is because mm-hmm. there was supposed to be stuff. At least that's my thought, is that there was supposed to be a lot of, hey, you, hey, you, uh, or something yeah. along that lines. Or Sam would have been seeing people. Like, mm-hmm. either Sam or Dean was going to see a lot more people and that was something that they had to obviously cut away on. Yeah. So I personally, like, would have rather them, like, if they went on hiatus during that time and, like, just didn't come back until COVID was, like, you know, like, the restrictions lightened up a little bit, I, like, I would have appreciated that. But obviously I know that, that that's not something that was feasible, but um, I, I, um... What are your what are your thoughts about like the possibility of like a reboot for Supernatural if if we neglect the last episode? I don't know. I, I don't think they can. Um, mm-hmm. But at the same time, I'm I'm just like you know let it let it lie. <laughs> like <laughs> um, I feel that it should just be. I think it's it's a chapter. It's it's closed. It's done. They tried to do two re. They tried to do two spinoffs in this time, and it never worked. I don't know, you could maybe get a TV movie, but then what would, like, how would you, you'd have to spend so much time explaining them coming back, and they'd be like, oh, you, we brought you back because something has arrived on Earth. Like, they'd have to bring fucking aliens, I swear, or, to actually. Or, <laughs> they could just completely forget the last episode happened and start off from episode 19. That was kind of, kind of what I was thinking, if they did do a reboot. Yeah, they Cause, they, they cause... could, but then you're you're almost walking into Rise of Skywalker territory. You're you're reverting things because of what is in front of because of what fans are saying instead of fixing the narrative that mm-hmm. you've been given or working with the yeah. narrative you've been given. That's the better word. Because um, mm-hmm. I know that Colin Trevorrow's script for his episode nine took what he had been given and he made the best of he could with it whereas rise of skywalker just like it just tries to erase a bunch of bullshit and in the end it makes it worse and that's why i feel that if you did do something for supernatural you you would have to take what you were given 
and work with that. Don't try and like you can't you can't uh, control Z this. You have yeah. you have to work with what you have. Because um, I in my comments I saw a few people mention that Jensen and Jared both mentioned that they would be down to do a reboot like in like five years with the show, which like I could I could see it happening. I just you got to be really creative to think of something to continue Sam and Dean's story after episode. Oh, 20. of course, and you would also need them. You need to have some backers. I don't think that. Uh, I think by the end the producers were writers they they were a story assistants and they were just people who had been working on the show for like absolutely fucking ever i know mm-hmm. that singer from what i was told singer was just tired he was just done with mm-hmm. it um and then again you'd have to find people who would be wanting to willing to invest in it and i think now you you slash the fan base in half with your ending so mm-hmm. i i don't know like it could happen. I'm not a hundred percent saying that it wouldn't happen, but I'm like ninety five percent sure it won't happen. Yeah, I'll like hope because I honestly feel like Sam and Dean deserve a better ending than what they got. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> but there's, and, uh, there, but like, like, well, I can't. I guess I can't a hundred percent count it out because Dexter is getting a revival <laughs> miniseries, um, and I had a terrible ending, uh, mm-hmm. but. Yeah, uh, it, it, I, I think it really depends on how successful Walker is for Jared because this yeah. is him taking on something by himself. And Do you plan on watching Walker? Eh, I don't know. I, it, it seems a little cliche to me. Uh, I'm only going to watch it because I love Jared Padalecki with all of my heart and soul. Um, if, and that's the only reason. <laughs> I, I, I'll maybe give it a look to see. I'm very interested to see how he... he Jared can do well when he's given good direction, but when he doesn't have good direction, he's... he's oh, what is that spam number? Uh, he is quite terrible. Uh, in honesty, he, he's he's a bit bad in certain scenes, but that depends on his direction. Like, he, an actor is only as... An actor is decent at his own craft, but when he's not given good direction, it can turn into a disaster. So I'm, I'm interested to see how that works um with uh jared i think he's also producing the show if i am mistaken i don't know if well apparently he was going to quit acting or he was going to just retire after this show i i they probably wait with walker or supernatural supernatural both of them were like kind of uh eyeing it the fact that jensen's going to be in uh the boys a lot of people are really over hyping that um Mm -hmm. i think he's not going to be in he might be he's going to be as the same as what was her name stormfront or whatever her name was uh mm-hmm. he's he's not going to be a main main character he's going to be a side hero character but it's also going to be interesting to see how jensen works with other people because they've for the last 15 or last 10 years last seven years they have been the head honchos of their own thing so it's going to be mm-hmm. s- interesting to see them take a step down well at least for jensen yeah I also think that Jensen's just, like, uh, he's doing, like, a lot of other things, too, besides just acting, because he started his own company with the, mm-hmm. um, I, I heard he started his own production company, I believe. Um, oh, I didn't know I about that. I know about yeah, the, the beer. Yeah, him and Daniil, yeah, him and Daniil did. I don't know if that's, if that might be about the beer or not. <laughs> um, I would have to look into it, but, um, I think I could be wrong, um, because I haven't double checked that, but um, yeah, it, it's 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 cool to think about the fact that you know we'll be able to see Jared and Jensen play other characters and do other things. Um, but you know, for me, like I, whenever I see Sam and D, whenever I see Jared and Jensen, I see Sam and D. Oh and I know yeah, that it's not all that they are, obviously. But I've tried watching Friday the Thirteenth with Jared Padalecki, and it's just like. All I see is Sam. Oh, he's a hundred percent just Sam in that episode. Um, the yes. one who actually tried a different character was uh, Jensen in uh, what was it? Uh, Bloody Valentine, which actually isn't oh, bad. Oh, I did watch that. Yeah, um, I I watched like half of it. It's it was not, good. Yeah, it's not. But I it's not bad. It. Jensen's actually not too bad in that. He's actually a, a, he's a different character from what we're used to.
Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say The Click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.